urban heat islands affect human health and it affects energy consumption. Those two things alone are enough to drive worldwide interest. When we build an urban area, we're replacing the vegetated surface and also the soil surface with this impervious surface like the paving material and the building material. By doing this, we're basically warming the urban areas and this will generate a temperature difference and that's what we call the urban heat island. We find out that the urban heat island affected by several factors. The first factor will be the surrounding ecological context. And then will be the size of the city. We talking about size. We can uh, we mean both the area of the city and also the population size of the city. And then will be the shape of the city, and also the development patterns of the city. We used a variety of satellite data, both land surface temperature data from MODIS and also impervious surface data from the Landsat satellite. Impervious surface data is essentially tells us how much building material is on the land surface in order to study the urban heat island. The urban heat island is much larger if you convert a forested area into an urban area. And this is because the urban heat island is a relative measure. So, so urban areas and forests are much warmer than the surrounding landscape than they are in deserts, for example, because the surrounding landscape is already warm. I think the general public should be interested in urban heat islands because of the fact that it's where most of the people live and in the next 50 years we're going to see 80 percent of the global population living in cities and the urban heat island matters for everything from health like asthma and, and heart conditions to how much heating and air conditioning you need to use to, uh, to cool or heat your living space.